This is a DIY raised garden bed for baby tortoises. Perfect for those of you that may be limited in space or just want a nice addition on your patio or deck. It's suitable, it's safe, it's secure, and it's beautiful. So let's travel back in time about two hours ago when I first started putting this together so I can show you how you can make one of your own. Raising tortoises outside from little babies is absolutely possible, and you don't have to go nuts trying to figure out the best way to do it. Everybody's got a Home Depot or some kind of garden supply store where you can pick up the exact items I'm gonna go inside and grab right now so your tortoises, as babies, can spend at least the summer outdoors worry-free. raised garden beds. Excellent choices for raising outdoor tortoises. So if you don't have an expansive yard or property where you can build all different kinds of pens and you just have a porch or a patio or a deck that you want to set up something nice so your young tortoises can get outdoor time, this is it. This is your option. And speaking of options, there are a lot of them here. They have wooden ones, metal ones, but we're going to go with this plastic one right here because of the depth of it. This enables me to put enough substrate for live plants and then not have to worry about the tortoises escaping. Um, whereas, you know, something like this is really nice looking, but when it comes down to it, by the time you put the substrate in, you're not gonna have much of a lip left there and you could be running the risk of losing a tortoise or whatever. So we're gonna go with this one. And what's nice too is this comes up almost 30 inches. So it's gonna be a nice height so that if you have a bad back or you just don't like bending over that much, you can just work at a comfort zone instead of having to bend all the way over. Keep a closer eye on your animals. Could also keep maybe your dogs out of it if you have problematic dogs. So uh, I think this is a really nice choice. So let's get it, let's get the other supplies and start decorating it. Lightweight too. So I'm grabbing some perforated raised garden bed fabric because what we're gonna do is create a bioactive setup here. Just like we've done in some indoor enclosures, we're gonna put down a rock layer or lava rock on the bottom, and then we're gonna put this on top so that water can get down through it because you want proper drainage for both the plants and the animals, but you don't want the substrate getting mixed with the rocks and then you end up with a slushy mess. So make sure you grab some of this. of garden centers or even supermarkets where they have plants like this, vegetables and herbs that you can grow on your own are a great place to start for looking at what to plant in any tortoise enclosure, not just a raised bed. And that's because you want things that look great, offer cover, but of course are safe to eat. So I'm gonna choose a couple items here. They have things like kale and romaine lettuce and other lettuces, which you can add, but those are gonna get mowed down almost immediately because the tortoises are gonna become obsessed with eating them. And you also don't want them to get hooked on those items. So what I'm actually gonna grab right here is English thyme. That's a creepy time and even though it's safe for the tortoises to eat the fragrance actually usually deters them from eating it so that's why it's a great choice because if they want to eat it it's just fine but nine times out of ten they leave it alone this is creeping time so it's going to creep which means it's going to create a lot of ground cover for the tortoises to hide under very important especially because tortoises have to be in sunny locations so let's uh, start with three of them Even though the animals are gonna be outside and they're gonna have plenty of rain and moisture, they still need drinking and soaking water and terracotta saucers make a perfect water bowl for them. So, gonna grab one of those. So this whole operation here so far has cost me about 280 bucks, uh, minus the big lettuce pot here, which is for us. Casey wanted that so we can start growing some lettuce. Um, you don't have to spend that much. You know, you could get less plants because these plants are obviously gonna take off, but what's nice about them is you could transplant and separate them and use them for other units. So uh, yeah, in my opinion, this is really not bad and you're gonna get a lot of use out of this. This thing is super easy to assemble. All you have to do is put the legs on. One screw. 
so this is pretty cool. They give you a little plug for the drain here because you are going to want proper drainage. Remember, these are baby tortoises we're gonna keep in here and we don't want it to get overly wet and that's also something you don't want for the plant life you're gonna be growing in here because the roots can get all rotted. So generally, I would say you don't even need the plug. You can leave this wide open because we're gonna be doing a rock level for drainage as our very first layer, um, but it's good to have it either way. So for now, I'll put it in and I can take it out later. Rocks for a drainage layer, very, very important. And there's all different types of rock or stone that you can use. You can use pea gravel, blue driveway stone, uh, but what I'm gonna use right here is just simple river stone. This is leftover stuff from our aquascape ecosystem when it was being built, so it is a perfect candidate for a drainage layer for this outdoor tortoise raised garden, if you will. So you don't need to go crazy with the drainage layer as far as depth goes, two to three inches will be more than fine. And now we're going to add the potting mix, which is what's really gonna benefit the plants that are gonna be growing in here. This fabric comes in handy because it helps protect the soil and the substrate from getting down into the rock. It's not the end of the world if it does, and this is honestly your choice, you don't have to do it, but if you want it to stay neater and have a little bit more of a flowing system there where the water passes down through the substrate, through the fabric, then through the rock, put this down first. Cut it to size, it's that simple. So this is great, it's actually pre-cut, I didn't even realize that, and it will fit the length of this just fine. The actual unit is gonna be a little bit wider, but you don't even need to cut this. You can just fold it over a little bit because the water will pass through just fine. So here you go, break it apart. The ingredients in a substrate are gonna be very important and that's why I always choose organic. This is a new brand that I'm using, but I don't expect it to really be any different than any of the other organic brands I've used like uh, Nature's Care, for example. This stuff is great, it's safe for plant and animal, and some of the ingredients that you can look right at on the side of the bag are proof that this is a good substrate. Uh, things like coconut core and sphagnum moss are within this substrate and that's all beneficial stuff to the tortoises too. So these are the plants we chose for the raised bed. Again, they are safe for the tortoises to eat, but we chose species of plant that they're not crazy about. Again, perfectly safe should they choose to eat them, but unless they're really starving, they're not gonna really go nuts destroying these, at least not too quickly. Uh, and the main thing is that they're aesthetically pleasing, as in they're beautiful, and they offer plenty of cover so the animals can feel secure. Remember, no tortoise, no matter what age it is, wants to feel exposed. They wanna be able to expose themselves only when they choose the need to, like to bask for a little bit. Other than that, they like to stay as hidden as possible. They're wild animals at heart, which means that instinct is always going to take over and if they feel vulnerable, they're going to start stressing out, they'll stop eating, and then you've got problems and then you might end up with a dead tortoise. So we picked calendula, which is a marigold. We picked lavender. We picked creeping phlox. We picked two different types of stone crop. We also picked rosemary and creeping thyme. So let's just go have fun. Let's put them in and see how they look. This is my favorite part, getting creative, having lots of fun with all the different things that get to go inside this outdoor raised bed tortoise enclosure. Um, what's the method to my madness, you might ask? I have no idea. All I know is that it's got to look good and it needs to make sense, but not from a symmetry standpoint. You just want the animals to have places to explore, feel secure in, but there are a couple things you need to remember. The taller plants, you're not gonna wanna put them right up against the side or right up against the corner because a lot of tortoises, not all species, are excellent climbers. And even as babies, they can use these plants to get up over the side. But I am also gonna talk at the very end about something you could do for the top of this to prevent that and also prevent predation from something like a bird. But anyway, let's get started here. I'm just gonna start putting these two in. These are two of the biggest plants we have and I'm gonna work around them. I'm gonna put one other large plant in before I go any further with plants because I'm gonna take a break after this one to do the actual enclosure decor to make sure that it all jives and makes sense. Um, this can go right here. I'm gonna kind of press this one right up against it because in nature, things are gonna grow into each other, right next to each other. 
we're not gonna exactly worry about giving each other space. All right, so, got rosemary right next to these calendulas. I wanna do one of my favorite things first here. Driftwood, staple in any turtle or tortoise enclosure, whether it's an aquatic animal or terrestrial. And what I want this to do is not only just look cool, but I want the animals to be able to use it for refuge. So you see how this is kind of like arced here? The animals can use this to hide under since they're so small. Remember, we're dealing with baby tortoises right now. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna press it up against this lavender. And the tortoises can go underneath the lavender right here and actually use this piece of driftwood as cover. Put that down in there. God, everything smells so good. <laughs> but you know, these fragrances that are so appealing to us from these plants are actually not for the tortoises. And that's why they often don't choose to eat these plants even though they're safe for them. So I had one whole big sheet of stone crop and what I did was rip it apart into sections so that I can work it around some other things because this stuff is going to continue to creep which is exactly what we wanted to do because it creates grazing areas for the tortoises. I think a good spot is right here to hug the basking area and also it kind of tears these plants. So you've got a tall rosemary and now you've got very low lying stone crop. This is low lying to a baby tortoise. An adult would probably clean this up in no time if it likes the taste. One of the most crucial aspects in keeping tortoises properly that I'm sure you've noticed is the common denominator across many videos we do when it comes to tortoise care is no matter the age and no matter the species, they absolutely need access to water. Hydration is important and that's the way they grow smoothest and stay healthiest. Remember, diet is secondary. It's of course crucial to a normal life and growth, but water is something that must be in play at all times. And that's why we use these saucers. That's why we make sure we give them a humid environment. And out here in Southern New Jersey, through the spring, summer, and fall, it's gonna be plenty humid for any species of baby tortoise, but they still need that drinking water. So always make sure that this is filled with clean water, especially if you notice that a drought is coming and you're not gonna be getting rain for a while. And that, it goes for anywhere that you live. They absolutely always have to have water and it is extra important when they're so small. But before we fill it up, I have to add one more element to this enclosure because this substrate, while it's suitable for moisture, hydration, for the plant roots, and for the tortoises to burrow into, it's not great for traction. So what I wanna actually do is use some of the natural earth here on the southern New Jersey coast, which closely mimics a lot of wild tortoise habitats across the world so that the tortoises can have a nice naturalistic footing when they move around. This is really good stuff. This is natural New Jersey Pine Barrens sugar sand. And uh, it's very, very naturalistic for a wide variety of tortoise species, especially the ones that are gonna be going in here. Adds traction, and it's very aesthetically pleasing. When it dries, because right now it's a little bit wet, it actually looks white. And that's where those beautiful white sandy roads that you see in photographs and videos of the Pine Barrens come from. Make sure the rock gets exposed for basking, and you can brush that off from time to time if the tortoises are dragging substrate onto it. And remember, sand is a tortoise's friend, not enemy. It's found in all wild tortoise habitats. It's one of the most natural components that they naturally occur on. And if you're feeding the animals properly and not directly off the ground, where sand can constantly get stuck to it, well then you don't have a problem with impaction. Impaction is an age-old, outdated scare at this point in the advances of tortoise keeping really makes no sense. Use it. Here we go, the moment of truth, the moment we've all been waiting for, putting the baby tortoises in. And in this case, we're gonna use this to start rearing outdoors our six baby radiated tortoises that you guys have probably seen in a couple different videos we've done already. These tortoises all hatched here over the winter at Garden State Tortoise from the beautiful adults that get to spend their lives here with us. And this is more than suitable to grow these animals up for at least 
this summer. Then they can be moved out and then a new hatch next year could be placed right into this. This enclosure can be used for so many different types of tortoise. In fact, I can't think of one that wouldn't do well in this outdoors, except maybe the Egyptian tortoise if you live in an area that gets too much rain. Regardless, this is more than enough to keep these animals secure, well fed, well hydrated, and for them to get that natural sunlight. But before I put these little guys and girls in, I do want to bring up a very important point, and that is protecting them from predation, protecting them from animals that would not hesitate to eat them, and that includes birds. You can make a lid for this, or you can put fishing line across the top to keep birds from getting in, um, or you can just simply take metal hardware cloth and bend it over the sides so that nothing can get into it. You can also bring the tortoises indoors at night if need be, but if you're going to leave them out and you're not supervising them, you have to do something extra to this, like make a lid or put it somewhere enclosed. You could put this inside a kennel or something that is fully enclosed so that nothing from the top or bottom can get in. Speaking of the bottom, this is why I like the raised beds. Moles are a very big predator of both tortoises and tortoise eggs and also turtles and turtle eggs. So by having this off the ground, moles are no longer a problem. This thing properly drains. It's got live plants in it, the proper substrate, the proper drainage level. It's got water. It's got a basking area. It is more than ready to accommodate these animals throughout the active season as they grow up into juveniles. So let's put them in and see how they like it. Nothing beats the natural sun and the natural elements when it comes to properly raising turtles and tortoises from little sensitive babies. As long as you can protect them well and provide them with everything they need, really outdoors is where they should be. Now this unit, just like anything brand new, is going to take some time to reach its full potential. Right now the plants are a little bit stressed, they need to be watered. Luckily we've got some heavy rains coming so that'll really help this get jump started. But I can't wait to see uh, as things tie in, you know, as the uh, stone crop and the thyme really take off and they start creeping around uh, and the tortoises although they may not be overly enthusiastic about these plant species as far as eating them goes they will help to keep them in check a bit especially the stone crop and I love it I, I think it's awesome it's perfectly suitable for them again don't forget to predator protect it either put this inside something closed in like a kennel or make a lid of some sort for it that tortoise landed right on his feet that was awesome but uh, there you go there's our brand new home for our baby radiated tortoises and I hope you guys like this idea it's really not that expensive it's very effective and it can really look beautiful so it's an addition to your home and also something suitable for your animals and this can be put right on a patio or deck you don't have to have the expansive property that we have with all these crazy pens and ponds everywhere something like this to start your baby tortoises is great if you enjoyed this but you want to know how you can raise them indoors properly check out this video right here